Yeah, so it's really great to be racing again. Obviously, I would have liked to start in May. So, I mean, it's really great to be the first event back in the British Isles. So that's really exciting. And obviously on a brand new track as well. It's a really great experience. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with the start. I haven't seen the video back of it yet. So I'll probably look at that later. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it went. Yeah, it was great. Um, I guess better late than never, but yeah, great to get um, a race out on the new track. Um, conditions uh, played ball for us today as well. Um, obviously a bit of a reduced competition, but, um, I guess a bit of a blessing to now be able to do this. Now we're sort of at the end of everything that's been going on and I guess you know, testing that everything's been going on in Guernsey compared to the rest of the world that we're actually able to hold this sort of competition. So yeah, and I feel, feel very fortunate to have been able to compete today. Coming into it, I, I, you know, I haven't raced for almost two years now. I um, took a bit of time out um, whilst I lived off island. And, you know, so coming in, I, I, I kind of knew I was in shape to run our island game standard, which was 11.15. So that was really my goal for today and anything else was a bonus. Well, a confident shout from James Bugle there. Yes, Johnny, that's 40 metres plus. Let's hope it is. 43 metres and 32 centimetres for Johnny Gill, and that's a personal best by three metres. And actually, dare I say, edging near the Island game standard of 49 metres. So a two metre improvement there for James Bogor, 56 metres and 69 centimetres. 56, 69 and uh, James Bogor extends his lead and he seems quite happy with that one. The performance of Javon State easily, easily my, my favourite uh, series that I've ever, ever thrown. Lining up in uh, lane one, we'll have Sam Leslie, whose uh, personal best of 157.47 was run last year. He finished fourth in the Hampshire Championships last year, former student of both Aberystwyth and St Andrews University. He goes in lane one. In lane two, an 18-year-old with a personal best of 2 minutes, 00.23 seconds. And uh, just finishing off at... Um, Elizabeth College and hoping to go on to Oxford is Isaac Powers. In lane five, we've got uh, an athlete that made his Island Games debut way back in 2011 over this distance. He's got a personal best of 159.89. Recently ran 4.23 in one of the national ranked Strava Mile competitions. 
But in lane five is Will Bodkin. Not even and uh, in the outer stagger, somebody specialising in the longer distances, his uh, best time over this 800 metres is two minutes, 6.47 seconds. Lane seven, James Priest. So reading from the inside, Sam Leslie, Isaac Powers, Will Bodkin and James Priest. Obviously a very long stagger here. They're running in lanes for the whole of the two laps. It's going to be fairly difficult to gauge their positions until they get into this uh, final lap, I'm guessing. Sam Leslie and the inside lane looks to have gone off fairly strongly, but fairly even, really. <laughs> Most of these athletes are hoping to get near or on that two minute mark. Isaac oh, Powers has uh, edged it and nudged it on several occasions without getting below. But Sam Leslie, I think, leads there, goes through, goes through the lap in 58 seconds. So that's the athlete in lane one. Probably the leader at the moment. It's still very deceptive because these athletes are split by a. Uh, an extra lane, really. Sam Leslie in lane one still looks to be leading. Isaac Powers tracking him. They go through pretty much bang on one minute 30 through the 600 meter mark. <laughs> Will Bodkin in lane five looks to be gaining in strength, but it's Sam Leslie that's going to lead going in with 100 metres to go. It's Sam Leslie leading, Isaac Powers comes on the shoulder of Will Bodkin. So Sam Leslie striding for the line. I think he's going to be just outside that two minutes. Two minutes and two seconds on officially. Isaac Powers second, Will Bodkin third, James, Power, James Priest fourth. Throwing the first, we'll have the Ireland women's record holder, Sia Banbury. She set that record of 44 metres, 97 centimetres last year. So it's a bit difficult to tell from the sectors, but that looks beyond 40 metres for Sia. 40 metres and 43 centimetres is Sia Bambri's opening hammer throw. So third round throw now for James Buggle. Thirty-seven meters and seventeen for James Bogor there. Yeah, happy, happy. It's only the third time we've used the inside cage since it's been up. So uh, yeah, to to get a consistent series in there was was a bonus. It was good. It was nice to be competing. It was nice to be able to to get started. I mean not the most amazing of situations given everything that's been going on and you know, it would have been lovely to be able to start the season a bit earlier but to be able to be here especially compared to the situation in England it's amazing. They were okay for the first competition out you know we're, we're building and we're, we're still trying to get into the swing of things I haven't been back training for too long so it was alright given everything. The uh, opening race of the day between these two, it was Josh that edged it by just one hundredth of a second 
11.08 seconds to Tom's 11.09. So nearest the infield, is Tom Drews in the predominantly white strip, and nearest the railings, Josh Alloway in the predominantly green strip. So again, it's very quickly away by both of them, but I think it's Alloway that's just got that metre at the halfway point, and he's going to hang on to that. Josh Alloway just edges that one from Drews, but this time it's quicker by the looks of it. The uh, PA clock is saying 10.92 seconds. So we'll confirm this officially later on, but it looks like Josh Alloway has won the second round of the 100 metres, 10.93 seconds to Tom Drews's 11.04. And if I'm right, that's the 25th time that Josh Alloway has run below 11 seconds. Second race, I guess, was quicker, slightly wind assisted, unfortunately. But um, yeah, it's, it's great to set a marker down and, you know, come out here and, you know, do what I was looking to do. So historically, and, you know, um, back when I was training a couple of years ago, my starts were always my strongest bit. Um, obviously, with the the lockdown and a bit of time away, you know, the, the technique has kind of gone. So it's definitely a, 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 you know, a point for me to work on and I've got loads of time to gain in that sense. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy in a way that, it, you know, it didn't go as well as it could have, you know, there's loads to build on. So um, the top speed surprisingly was there, um, having not done much training over the last couple of months, um, surprisingly, but yeah, it was, it, it was great to get a run out anyway. So this is the final race of the day, the women's 100 metres. Going nearest the infield in lane three, it's Amelia Lees in the middle lane. And the winner of the opening race of the day is Abby Galpin and nearest the railings in the outer lane, Vicky Mann. So quick away again, and Abby Galpin has already got three or four metres lead. And she's going to hold up to the line. It's Abby Galpin wins that one from Amelia Lees and Vicky Mann. And quicker yet, 12.24 seconds unofficially. We're going to have to wait for the wind reading for that one. And there's a slight shake of the head, but sadly that's a 2.2 meter tailwind again, so just 10% over the uh, allowed legal limit, so that cannot stand for record purposes. But the times are flashing up here. 12.24, the winning time of that race two for Abby Galpin. Second place to be confirmed, 12.84 for Amelia Lees. And third place, 12.94 for Vicky Mann. So the first round, um, I wanted to be near my PB, and I was, so I was really happy with that just to get a time down. I thought I could eke a little bit more out in the second round, which I did, although unfortunately the wind didn't count, but I'm still really happy at the time. 